What does it take to be a mature believer? You are not a mature believer because you have encounters with angels every night. You are not a mature believer because you, are, you have a title of a prophet. You are a mature believer because number one, you walk in love. Love is the verdict of maturity in the spirit. When a man has not grown into the realm of love, he's not a mature believer. He may be a babe with a large congregation and a big title. And so you find bitterness, you find gossip, you find backbiting, you find manipulation, you find witchcraft. All of those things are signs of the flesh. But a man who has attained love, forgiveness becomes the signature of his life and brokenness becomes the expression of his essence. And so no matter what happens, you don't need to apologize before he forgives you. And you can never get him to a point where he's fighting with you. You can never get him to a point where he speaks evil about you. You can never get him to a point where he's bitter towards you. You can never get him to a point where he tries to pull you down. It is not, you know, our world today is so, is, is, is so, is so bastardized. Manipulation all over the place. Because we are pursuing things, not God. When believers become truly mature, they can now live together. Today it's difficult to find believers coexisting together. Because flesh will not let it happen. Flesh can never let it happen. But when you see the early church, they were together, then they grew to one accord, then they grew to singleness of heart. That is maturity at work. They live by the verdicts of love. When a man becomes mature, the second sign is that he has control over his tongue. James says, see that man that is perfect. He has rule over his tongue. That's why the Bible said, you can take over a city. He said, but you have no power over your tongue or yourself. He said, you are weak. The man that has rule over himself is stronger than the man who can take a city. So a man who can take a city is powerful, but a man that has control over his tongue is mature. They are two different things. And so there are seven scriptural references that defines what spiritual maturity is. We will deal with that when we are done with evangelism. But all of that is what brings you into maturity. You know, we are in a, a spontaneous, you know, time in the move of God. So many people reduce spirituality to emotions, to energy, to excitement. It's deeper than that. That's why when they have a problem with their brothers, they don't know what to do. You find gossip everywhere. You find backbiting. You find witchcraft. You find manipulation. That's why when they are under pressure, when it has to do with finance, they don't know what to do. Anything that attacks their lives, they become helpless because they are not mature. Even though they are excited about the things of God, they are highly immature about the things of the Spirit. Paul said something in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 1. He said, if there is malice, if there is backbiting amongst you, he said, are ye not carnal? Are ye not babe? Meanwhile, the church Paul was speaking to, he said, you have all tongues. You know all mysteries. You have every gift. Yet, he says, this church is a babe and is immature. Why? Because the elements of the flesh predominates their relationships with one another. And so a man is one when he's discipled.